He spent hundreds of hours, 100 hours, living on the streets of Los Angeles last week so he could better understand what the unhoused experience in their daily lives. This is where we're going to spend the night. I've got some cardboard underneath me. It's dropping down. It's just a couple of hours in. The rain's coming down. I don't know how people survive outside. That right there is Rowan Van Sleeve. He's the president of the nonprofit Hope of the Rescue, uh, Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission, pardon me, based in the San Fernando Valley. Its mission is to prevent, reduce, and eliminate poverty, hunger, and homelessness. And as you see him right there, Rowan is with us live tonight. Thank you for being with us. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. What a journey you just went through. 100 hours on the streets of Los Angeles. Why did you do this? You know, I've done this work for about 20 years, um, both with Hope of the Valley and other agencies. And we wanted to shine a light. We're in the middle of a humanitarian crisis. You know, the official numbers are about 70,000 people on the street. I believe that number is probably a lot larger. And each and every single night, between three and four people actually pass away on the streets for no other reason than they're homeless. So we wanted to shine a big light on it, but also for me personally, I wanted to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. You know, I've never spent one night unsheltered. I do this work, I tell the story of the homeless and the poor, but I've never been affected from it. I've got so much privilege, more than I should ever deserve. And I think being a leader in this field, I needed to take that step and truly understand. So what was it like? It was cold. It was absolutely numbingly cold. The week we picked turned out to be the coldest week of 2021 so far and the wettest. And it really broke me. You know, we did a mental health survey before we went out. And then again, at the end, at the start, we passed with flying colors. And then at the end, both Ken and I, who spent the week with me on the street, we watched that mental decay and it was shown in that final test as we had increased anxiety, memory, memory loss. We started to fumble and slur our words. It was incredible mm. how quickly the streets broke us. Uh, you mentioned how cold it was, but, you know, really, what, what is it like when you're when you're trying to figure out where you're going to sleep, how you're going to eat? How did you do that? Well, finding a place to sleep was one of the hardest things that we faced. When I realized very quickly that the city is actually designed to keep homeless people out. Every little entryway had gates on it. There were security cameras everywhere. So we bedded down the first night in the middle of the big rainstorm last week underneath an overpass with nothing but cardboard keeping us off the ground. The following night, we found a little spot on the side of a tractor trailer that had parked and that worked fairly well until about four in the morning when the truck driver had to move the truck you know and this went on each day on wednesday we were sleeping in a local park where we were disturbed at about four again in the morning by a security guard and that trauma each night just took its toll and we became hyper vigilant and withdrawn from people it was incredible the impact of that uncertainty of where you were going to sleep took on each of us so you obviously deal in the world of, of public policy for for homeless um how yeah. did this change your perception there and do you think now that other things should be happening than you thought about before going through this yeah, absolutely. I am of the firm belief now, and I have a renewed fire about this, that shelter is a human right. No one is going to stay sober or sane while they're sleeping on the streets. You just can't do it. We need to bring people inside immediately. I'm so proud to be a part of the city of Los Angeles who has worked with Hope of the Valley to build tiny homes. They go up in about 90 days. They're cost efficient and they can house people with dignity. We need more and more of this. And thankfully, our city is stepping up, but we need the county as well to come to bear with even more support on mental health solutions. If you think myself and Ken entering this and less than 100 hours, we're showing symptoms of mental illness starting to emerge. Somebody who has been thrown on the street, maybe with an addiction issue, some existing mental health, they're not going to survive. So if we're going to get through this crisis, and I believe we will, we need more shelter, 
and more mental health services immediately. And it doesn't need to be something that drips out. We need the front lines flooded with support. Uh, I also thought it was interesting um, it, because you documented so much of it, how people just ignored you when you were out there on the streets. You know, that was an incredible experience for me. I don't think I've ever been shunned like that before. And on the very last day, and we weren't able to capture this on camera, there was a young woman walking by us. And I mentioned to Ken, you know, she's walking by us. We stepped off the sidewalk so she could walk by. And I noticed she'd taken her key in one hand and she'd held it like a dagger to kind of fend us off. And as she walked past, she kept her eye on us all the way until her car, um, just filled with fear. Or we'd go to a mm -hmm. cafe where we would sit down for a moment to charge our phones and immediately people would move away from us. That constant rejection from society was really a self-fulfilling mm -hmm. prophecy. We started to feel rejection. We started to feel ashamed of the way we looked and the way we smelled, it was incredibly impactful. Mm. So powerful and eye-opening. Uh, Rowan Van Sleeve of Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission, thank you for sharing your experience with us and stay thank in you. touch. Absolutely, and you can watch it at hopeofthevalley.org forward slash hope wins. Yeah, and a bit of a tease for tomorrow night, we're gonna have some news on the tiny home front tomorrow night at Wonderful. seven. We hope you'll tune in for that.